answers to a series of questions. Questions that have been posed either via email or, or through chat forums or posed directly to me over the last two to three weeks. Um, some of these have been addressed on the website, uh, which if you go to www.wearebank.co.uk and look at the FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions page, you will see that some of these questions have been addressed. Um, others are new, and so we're going to address these now. But before I do that, I'd like to address a fundamental, um, a fundamental problem that all people uh, probably have to face when they're in a situation of wanting to bring change. Uh, change in any form is always uncomfortable. There are the people who profess to want to be part of the change movement. There are people who are avidly certain that they want to be part of it. But always, without exception, no matter what movement it is, there are always these backbiters, these chills, these trolls, these people who will make all sorts of accusations based on rumour, based on conjecture, and some of them actually based on the fact that they're paid by the government and the banking institutions and whatever uh, organisations you might call security services to try and destabilise a movement. Look, for example, as a prime example, is what happened to the People's Voice, um, set up by my very good friend David Icke, who I hope is still watching my videos. Uh, it didn't last more than three months. Um, his, uh, his hard drives, his security passwords were, were hacked into, and the whole thing was, was brought down in a very, very short period of time. Uh, and equally, that was because of, should we say, personality differences that crept in. Um, what I'm trying to address at the moment is the questions about my sincerity, my background, who and what I am and what I'm looking to do. There are those of you out there now who will hear people saying, oh, this weird bank thing and re-movement, it's a sham, it's a fraud, it's a Ponzi scheme, it's something designed to get £10 a month from you, and there's this rumour of a checkbook and real assets. Um, and you don't know whether this is true or not. You have a hard feeling that you think it's true. But there's always those people who are a little bit, should we say, um, in the balance, indecisive, and can be rocked either way. But let me just assure everybody now, by putting this officially into the public domain in this video, that this is a genuine movement. It has good roots. It has what's called a solid ancestry and a very, very deep and powerful spiritual hierarchy that rests behind it. There are people involved in this, both on planet and off planet, to an extent that it would make your head spin if you could actually maybe comprehend it fully. So please be assuaged by those words. However, they're only words. If you actually look and find out what I've, I've been doing for the last 12 or 14 years, you'll see that I've been living quite a, 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 a should we say, a, a, a monasterial life. I spent a lot of time in France, I spent equally as much time in England, but this has taken a lot of work and a lot of thought and a lot of putting together. Um, and I will assure you, there are a lot easier ways for me to bring in £10 a month than putting some, shall we say, elaborate scam together. Um, so I'd like to just address that now for all those people out there that are standing next to you, whispering in your ear about what it is and what it isn't. They don't know anything, and 99.99% without fail, to not even understand some of the basic concepts of what it's meant to do and what the stages of evolution and unflowering of it will be. And please bear in mind, it's not new. It was set up in 2011 in France, and it was actually brought in as a website in 2012. So it's already well on the way to being three years, should we say, in gestation. So, that's what I wanted to get off my chest, um, and anyone that's got any doubts about it, um, then just keep with us, and you won't have doubts after a while. Thank you. So now I'm going to move on to the frequently asked questions. Um, the first question has come from someone over the internet. Why was Re Bank, uh, We're Bank uh, relaunched at the beginning of April? I've already addressed this point, in fact, and put a, a dedicated page on the website, uh, and it's this process of called what's called prorogation. And it was relaunched at a very specific time when there is, in effect, no de facto government um, in the Houses of Commons, uh, particularly in the House of Parliament, 
with the 650 plus MPs all returned to their constituency. It has a very, very, very significant constitutional and energetic window in which it's crept through. Okay, uh, the next thing is, um, why is We Are Bank necessary at all? Well, for those people who want to address the, the point in greater detail, you need to go and look at things like um, much of the information on the internet about the creation of money, the money masters, um, the five fraudulent facts of finance. Um, you need to find out the process of money, how it's created, and how you have been stolen from for, since before biblical times. The best analogy I think I can come up with is the analogy of a farmer ploughing a field with a horse drawing his plough. The effort of the horse and the guidance of the man is there for all to see. But the degree of labour and the degree of monetary or energy sweat of the brow theft that is emanating from this process is the equivalent of now the farmer having a rope tied around his waist attached to a three-piece suite with a fat banker with a cigar in his mouth sitting on that seat drinking champagne and you, or the farmer, pulling the whole thing through the field. A very conservative estimate on price structuring would be that if you took every single product off the shelf, on the shelf, every goods, service that is rendered, and divide it by a factor of five, you would have the true price of what you should be paying for those objects. So looking at it another way, if we do our job correctly, you'll be five times at least better off than you are now. Um, as to how the maths uh, are worked out, well, just trust us for now. Uh, we'll, we'll post up these mathematical certainties um, later. But you're taxed on everything. You're taxed on your pension. You're taxed on your working capital. Uh, you're taxed on your PAYE. When you take your PI, what, PAY, your, your salary home, you put that in a bank, you're taxed. Then when you draw your pension, you're taxed. When you put fuel in your car, do you know, between 85 and even as much as 90% of the, the cost of fuel is tax. It's revenue to the government. Look at the price of a pint of beer. 60 to 70% of that is tax. Your food's taxed. Everything's taxed. So we have a remedy for that. Which leads on to the first question here. People are concerned about something I've introduced um, unilaterally and imposed upon the, um, the commercial and financial world within the United Kingdom in the name of re-movement and in the name of, what should we say, uh, the government de jour, i.e. the government um, in waiting. And that is something called a financial, commercial, UK transaction tax. Yeah? F-C-U-K-T, which is pronounced fucked. Okay, we've looked at the idea of putting it as a 1% tax, but it may go as high as 5 because it isn't a tax that's imposed upon you. It's not something that we, a bank, is delivering onto its, its uh, membership base, those who are unionising with it. It's predominantly, to clear this misunderstanding up, that it is a tax that we are imposing on the commercial and financial industry. Yeah? So we abolish every single one of the 385 principal taxes and over, I think, nearly 1,000 stealth taxes that you labour uh, under, and we abolish them all. We abolish VAT, we abolish PAYE, we abolish capital gains tax, we abolish council tax, we abolish uh, fuel tax, um, uh, airport fuel surcharge taxes, Everything gets abolished and there is a between 1% and 5% tax imposed across the board on financial commercial uh, transactions. So, uh, we'll put more of that online soon. Okay, another big one. People are asking this and I, have n I had no idea that people didn't know how to write a cheque. How do I write a cheque? Well, for those who have got the cheque books, you fill it in on the front of the cheque with your name your signature, the date, 
the symbol for the currency you wish to pay in. Next to that symbol for the currency you want to pay in, you enter the amount in figures. And where it says pay, you put the name of the person that you want to pay. So if it's to the Toshiba company or Barclays, you say pay Barclays or the Toshiba company in words £148.43 pence only and that's it. Do not sign the back of the cheque. Do not make the cheque payable to yourself. If you're asking for money for yourself, then that might be a way to go. But you can't enter one of these cheques into the system for cash. Okay, hopefully we've clarified that. I never believe people didn't know how to fill in a cheque, but evidently some don't. Okay, next one, question. The council says that I cannot send a cheque to them to pay for my council tax. I have to make it out and deliver it or pay it in at the post office, making it payable to post office or post office counters. Nonsense, rubbish, the council is a corporate body. It is set up, it has a corporate number, it has a VAT number, and the, the proof of this is that if you fail to pay your council tax, and it's one of the few taxes, mysteriously, you can be sent to prison for not paying, is it the post office that takes you to court, or is it the council? That hopefully answers the question. No matter what they say, just fill in the cheque, attach the allonge, to every check you send and send it to the council or the legal department, whoever has asked for it, and there, we, there ends the story. Do not sign the check on the back. Do not make it out payable to yourself. Okay, next thing. I've tried recently to pay off my mortgage. I've contact, contacted Barclays Bank and they say because it's a mortgage account, I have to make the check payable to myself. If it's in joint names, that would maybe be paying Mr. and Mrs. Johnson £148,000 to pay off the mortgage. Nonsense. It is Barclays or Santander or um, Mortgage Trust or Mortgage Express. Whoever the people are who lent you supposedly the mortgage money are the people that you're looking to pay. You didn't lend yourself the money, so why on earth would you be looking to pay yourself the money in the first place? The mortgage account is a separate account. It's like having a, a, an account under the name Johnson and have a separate one under Johnson but for the mortgage payments to go in. So don't let them fool you or trick you. Stick to your guns. One allonge with one check. Deliver it to Barclays. Um, and what I would suggest, anyone who wants to do this, first... Find out from them how much it is you actually owe. Ask them to send a letter to you saying that you want to pay off the mortgage in its entirety. They send you a letter and then um, you pay it. There might be something called a per diem attachment to it, which would therefore give you a window of seven days or 30 days to pay. And that might say £7.60 a day, which would be the accrual of interest um, on the outstanding amount between the time they finalise the letter and when you make the payment. Okay? Um, another one. We a bank is a complete fraudulent entity. It doesn't have any real assets and it has no money of its own. Therefore, is um, is operating outside a monetary system. Okay. The thing we need to address here is first go away and find out what the definition of money is, what a negotiable financial instrument is, and how the banking system operates and produces its own money. For every individual who has joined Removement, they have been offered the facility of a WEA banking account. With that account, if they choose, comes a checkbook. But before the checkbook is presented to them, they need to produce and deliver to WEA Bank a promissory note, which is a promise to pay. It's a negotiable financial instrument under the Bills of Exchange Act. And please bear in mind, there is no such thing as money on the planet. There are only goods and services which pay for goods and services. The only thing of any wealth or any monetary value whatsoever on the planet is your promise to pay and your signature. 
That's all there is. That's the nature of money. Okay, the next point is um, the contributions I make in my monthly fee, uh, we are bank. Um, where does that money go? Well, the £10 a month gets credited into the account. The amount that you pay for your checkbook gets credited into your account in the form of RE. So, in effect, even though you are paying with sterling, we are absorbing that sterling and creating it into another currency. We do not recognise sterling as a monetary unit of account in the country, except for the abolition or the debt assumption aspect of paying it down to the debtor so-called. Okay, uh, next point. Um, about the monetary unit of account, why haven't you made one pound equivalent to one re? Therefore, the promissory note being 150,000 sterling to 150,000 re. This is partly uh, an answer to the previous question. In effect, we are not a complementary currency. We're not an alternative currency. We're a completely separate unit of account, marching parallel to the conventional, criminal, Babylonian debt slavery theft of energy, usurious accounting system that the Genovese, Florentine um, bankers uh, put into place in the 15th century. So we are totally separate from them. Once money comes into your account, as far as you're concerned, it only ever goes out again in re. Um, so we've covered the financial transaction, we've covered the council, we've covered how to write a cheque. Uh, the hotline, very important, the hotline on the cheque. The hotline on the cheque isn't for you, it's predominantly for the payee, the person that, or the organisation or the corporate entity you've given the cheque to. So please don't be phoning it because it's choking it up um, in a way that we just can't, we can't handle the calls coming in from the payee, like the bank or the mortgage company. Uh, next question. Can I sign a cheque to pay for my friend's water bill, my mother's mortgage, etc.? Absolutely not. Um, one or two people I said initially when they, they joined that maybe they could, but we stipulate if that individual cannot be prepared to join the movement and pay £10 a month to become a, a, a member, then to be quite honest, um, it's a facility that we, we don't want to entertain. We don't want cheques flying off, people paying for someone else's um, uh, should we say, respons financial responsibilities. If they join, they can do exactly what you're doing, but as far as we're concerned, you do not pay off a third party's um, debt liability. And we want to make that perfectly clear. Um, finally, I would say that um, I've covered about everything now, so what I would say is uh, there will be more questions that will be coming in over the period of the next weeks, but predominantly, take care. Be responsible. If in doubt, ask or ask someone else you know. Don't be morally responsible, uh, irresponsible. And this is predominantly a defensive banking process. It is not for you to issue checks to yourself to try and gain cash or have cash paid into you, uh, your account by the enemy system. Barclays and all these other people won't entertain it. And finally, the account number 88888 is an account for everybody. We are holding the monies, the promissory notes, the contributions in a trust, a constructive trust of which you are the beneficiary. Let's make that clear. So that's why you haven't got an individual account. You're all in it collectively together. And that's the beauty of the system. That's why it will prevail, why it cannot fail, and why we, we are bank, why we're here and why we are taking over the financial, commercial, transaction system within the United Kingdom. And let's just see what happens come election time. So it's Peter of England signing off. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to join. Thank you.